As thousands of heart specialists from around the world gather here in Chicago, there is an area of excitement when it comes to heart valve repair. Now there are new approaches being developed where they can use a catheter and go up from the groin rather than doing major heart surgery. One expert is Dr. Howard Herman from Penn Medicine. Dr. Herman, so at this meeting, where are we with uh, understanding and news related to treating valve problems in heart patients? Well, transcatheter valve therapies for valve disease, both mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis, have really come into their own in the last several years. We recently were involved with the presentation and results of the partner trial for patients with aortic stenosis, which is a blockage of the aortic valve. And nowadays we are able to treat that with the implantation of a transcatheter valve, essentially a stent that has a bioprosthetic valve inside it that's implanted inside the diseased aortic valve. At this meeting, we are presenting the health quality outcomes of that partner cohort B trial. That was the part of the trial that was for the highest risk, most severely diseased valves and patients, essentially patients who were felt to be inoperable, who couldn't have a regular open heart operation. And what we found was that their mortality, their chance of dying, was reduced by 20% at one year by getting this transcatheter valve. But the question remained in these older, elderly and frail patients, were they really improving their lives? Did we make an impact on what they were able to do on their outcome and their physical tolerance and, and ability to exercise? And at this meeting, we're presenting the health quality outcomes for that trial, and it demonstrated a huge improvement in their ability to do things. We looked at measures of uh, heart function, of their functional state, their ability to exercise, utilizing both traditional methods like the New York Heart Association classification, but also health quality outcomes, uh, uh, health quality outcome uh, pr um, measures in qualified and standardized tests, such as the Kansas City Health Quality Questionnaire. And there was a huge increase of more than 20 po points, which is considered a very large improvement at one year, even in these somewhat elderly, frail patients. Now, one of the things that uh, we're hoping for is, do you have minimally invasive ways to do all sorts of repairs with the heart? Where are we now? Is the jury still out on some? Some we're making better progress on because the hope is people, as you said, who couldn't have open surgery might benefit. So we're, we're also involved in other transcatheter therapies for other valve lesions. Um, it is likely that this valve, the sapien valve that's used for the aortic valve, will eventually uh, be started in trial and already is in trial, but we will also be using that for pulmonic valve problems in congenital heart disease. And we've been one of the first centers in the U.S. to be involved in treating mitral regurgitation, a leaky mitral valve, utilizing a technology which places a clip on the mitral valve, putting the two leaflets together so that they're less likely to move past each other and have less leakiness. That technology has now undergone a randomized trial. It is still investigational, but we are able to continue treating patients who are considered high risk for open heart surgery um, and for patients who can't have open heart surgery with this clip technique in the cardiac catheterization laboratories. So at Penn, for example, where you're doing this investigation, there may be more options, perhaps as part of a trial, than someone might hear about or be offered somewhere else. Absolutely. Both the transcatheter mitral valve repair technique called MitraClip and the Edward Sapien transcatheter aortic valve implantation technology are both investigational, but both are available at Penn, and we're treating patients every week with these technologies and hopefully making their lives better. So for someone who's older, where we used to say, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do, it sounds like you need to push that question a little more and really investigate, might there be an option that would be available that would be less invasive that would be appropriate? A absolutely. In fact, we know that patients who have aortic stenosis and are elderly are often not told that they have an option like this. And in fact, it's thought that about 30 percent 
of all the patients who have aortic stenosis are turning down surgery either because they're not being offered it or because they think they're too old for open heart surgery or they just don't want to undergo open heart surgery. And for many of these patients, both the transcatheter mitral and the aortic valve implantation option might be very applicable to them and might be something they'd be very willing to have and it might even improve their survival and certainly their quality of life. Right, it sounds like for an older person, rather than just feeling that their heart function was going down and their quality of life was going with it, that's all they could expect. They could, if you will, have a new lease on life. Absolutely. I mean, we'll have to wait for all of the trials to be finished to know exactly how these technologies compare to open heart surgery. And we're going to have to wait for the FDA to rule on whether they're going to be widely available. But in the meantime, we can certainly offer them to a select group of patients who meet the study criteria. While there are still questions to be answered on minimally invasive approaches to heart valve repair and even heart valve replacement, it's important for patients to be well informed and ask questions so that they make sure that all the options are available to them. On location in Chicago, I'm Andrew Shore.